Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. We are starting a live video and today we'll be doing a simulcast on both Facebook and on Instagram. So I will introduce myself again. Um, my name is Obia Iwa. I'm a cosmetic chemist and I am the founder and um, I'm also the formulating chemist of Obia Naturals. Hi everybody. So today we're gonna have fun. As you see, I have my white coat on today. I have my glasses on today. We're gonna go straight into the science of natural hair. And I'm gonna introduce you guys to the science behind natural hair and Ascobia. So Ascobia is a series that we've been discussing for a while now, but we're actually launching it in January of next year. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through a quick and short lesson to explain to you guys about pH balance because you always hear me talking about pH balance, pH balance, pH balance, but what I wanna do is go a little bit more in depth and explain to you what pH balance is and do a little bit of experiment to correlate why pH balance is important. But first, we're gonna talk about the hair. So this is a wash and go using our Curl Enhancing Custard, our Argan Rose Hair Oil, and Curl Hydration Spray, all items in the wash and go kit. And then also to talk about that, we still have a few holiday kits live on the website. So there's a wash and go kit, and there's a twist out kit, and there's a shampoo and condition kit. And I use all the products from the wash and go kit to achieve this. So today we're gonna go right into it and talk about pH balance, but as I'm talking, I want you guys to you know ask a lot of questions. I'm gonna go back and go through all of your questions and also interact with me. If I'm going too slow or if I'm going too fast, let me know and I can slow it down or I can speed it up. I wanna make sure that everyone follows along and everyone understands because it's a really, really, really important topic with natural hair and with yourself in general as far as your health goes. So what is pH balance? If anybody knows what pH balance is, Put it in the comments because I'm actually curious to see if people know what pH balance is. Okay, someone told me to breathe, so I'm going to slow it down a little bit. <laughs> thank you, and thank you to everyone that has joined, okay? So pH balance is the potential of hydrogen. It's a scale from 0 to 14 that basically measures how acidic or how alkaline a solution is. It also tells you how much hydrogen ion is in that scale and why does that matter? So it actually matters a lot because uh, the pH of your hair is normally between 4.5 and 5.5 on average. So the scale goes 0 to about 5 is the acidic scale, pH of 7 is neutral right, potential of hydrogen, and then anything above seven is alkaline. So when it comes to hair, it's important to discuss this because I'm actually gonna have, I have a little whiteboard and we're gonna write things down to make sure that everybody understands and as we go through. So again, pH of seven is water and it's neutral, right? So if your hair is between 4.5 and 5.5, that's actually slightly acidic. Your hair actually likes to be in a slightly acidic environment. So you know that your hair follicle has a cortex, which is in the center, and then it also has cuticles. So when your cuticles lay fat, flat, what happens is the moisture actually stays on the inside and all the nutrients that you have in your hair stay on the inside and it's shiny and it's flat. So when it's frayed or when it's open, what can happen is it can lead to frizziness. Your hair can actually, like as it goes against itself, knot up and create those little fairy knots that you see because your cuticles are open and your cuticles are not closed. So what you actually wanna do is make sure that your products are pH balanced so that your products stay within that healthy, pH to where your cuticles are laying down, they're smooth, and your hair is moisturized. So that's why pH balance is important to find products that make sure that they lay down your hair and keep your cuticle from being in a raised st a state all the time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little bit of a talk about certain household ingredients because a lot of people are um, use products in the home to do their hair, right? How many of you guys are familiar with using aloe vera in your hair. Wave, say hello, give me some hearts if you actually use raw aloe vera at home to do your hair with. Question is, do you know what the pH of aloe vera is and is it damaging to your hair or does it enhance and help your hair? Let's talk. So if your hair pH is between 4.5 and 5.5, it means that it actually wants to stay within that range. So when you use something 
Okay, so actually, you know, let's take it a step back because I think I might be talking a little bit too fast. <laughs> so there's only a few things that actually change your pH. Temperature and then also, okay, so temperature increases it or it can decrease the pH. So that's the reason why, for example, when they say that you have low porosity hair, it's actually really good to steam your hair because steam adds what? Heat. So heat opens your hair cuticles, it also opens the pores of your skin and um, lifts your hair shaft. Then cold water closes your hair shaft and actually lowers, um, closes the hair shaft. And that's the reason why they'll always say shampoo with warm water and then rinse with cool water because that's the only things that open and close the cuticles on your hair, okay? So we have a few things on the desk here that we're gonna discuss. The first thing we're talking about here is aloe vera. Then I have regular white vinegar, okay? And I also have apple cider vinegar, a favorite of a lot of naturals, but do you know what the pH is of all these things? Then we also have baking soda. So I've seen some people do videos on YouTube where they discuss doing a baking soda rinse, but do you know what that's doing to your hair and do you know actually why you're using the baking soda to do the rinse or not? And then I have more aloe vera juice in this container here because we're gonna do a reaction to show you guys the differences. But first, I'm bringing out the pH test strips because we're gonna test the pH of all of these items here and then discuss what that means in relation to your hair because what people don't realize is that kitchen chemists and people that are doing do-it-yourselfers at home, you need to know the reason behind what you're doing, what you're doing. So if you don't know the pH scale, it's actually very, very important before you just throw apple cider vinegar in your hair and not realize if it's an acid or a base and what it's actually doing to your hair follicle, okay? And don't forget, ask questions, I'm paying attention, and I'll answer in the end. And if actually anybody wants to share the video and do a live, we could do that at the end as well. So I'm gonna put on my gloves and we're gonna test the pH of these ingredients and let's see if any of you guys actually know the pH off the top of your heads. The first product that we're gonna test is the aloe vera. Can anybody tell me what the pH of aloe vera is? Or at least, actually let me ask this, do you think it's an acid or do you think it's a base? Comment below, I'll wait as I'm testing the strips and see what people think if it's actually gonna be an acidic product or a basic product. Because you put this in your hair but do you know why? You're putting this in your hair, all right? Okay, people are saying base, 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 guessing. Let's get a couple more guesses because I want this to be interactive. Between zero to 14, remember, water is neutral at seven. So the question again is, is aloe vera a base or an acid? Base, base, base. It's not acidic, base. All right. Thank you guys to all that have joined. We're doing a couple experiments to discuss the natural hair and products that you have in your kitchen to help you guys understand a little bit more about what it is. Okay, and what we're asking is, is aloe vera a base or an acid? All right, we got a lot of responses. Let's test and let's see if you guys are correct. I'm gonna dip the strip in. Okay. And here's the strip here, okay? Let's see if you guys can correlate to what that is. Actually, I'm doing this upside down. It's really difficult, sorry. Let me turn this right around the other side. So, and let me close the cover so the rest of the strips don't fall out. But if you guys can see, it's actually about a pH of what? Five. All y'all are wrong. <laughs> Aloe vera is slightly acidic. It's actually within the normal pH of your hair between 4.5 and 5.5. Aloe vera is about a five. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. So every single person was wrong. So I hope you guys stay tuned and keep listening because this is very, very important because I've noticed that there's a lot of misinformation on YouTube, on different, you know, on blogs about people that are not chemists that actually don't know. And they're making assumptions and telling you guys what to do, but they're not explaining the science behind it. So aloe vera is slightly acidic. Let's do another test. Hmm. Since you guys got this completely wrong, I still want you guys to guess. Let's test apple cider vinegar. This is a, a favorite of naturals to you know clean your hair, but do you know the pH? 
is apple cider vinegar, is it an acid or is it a base? Yeah, take notes because we're actually gonna expand on this. This is gonna be a full series on YouTube. We're gonna go in depth, ingredient by ingredient, next year starting in January. So let's see the comments, acid or base? Comment below. I know people are not just saying the opposite because the other one was a base. This could be a base too. It might not be an acid. <laughs> okay, some people are saying acid, acid, acid. Let's test, okay? All right, I'm gonna put the pH strip in on camera so you guys can see if is it an acid or a base. So people are going as far as a pH of two, three. Okay, let's see if it's gonna be strongly acidic or if it's weakly acidic. All right, let's put it in and see if you guys are right. So someone just said the pH is eight. If the pH is eight, that means it's a base, right? Anything above seven is a base. Anything below seven is an acid. Depends on how strong, is it, strong of an acid it is or how weak of an acid, or sorry, how weak of a base it is. All right, here we go. And let's see what you guys thought are correct. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it is about a pH of three, between three and four. So it is actually even more acidic than aloe vera juice. So aloe vera juice is weakly acidic, whereas the apple cider vinegar is actually more strongly acidic. Hmm. All right, let's test one more and see what you guys know. Let's test regular vinegar, white vinegar. And then also, does it matter if you're using white vinegar versus apple cider vinegar when you're doing your vinegar rinses? Answer below and I'm gonna talk about that. So what is the pH of regular white vinegar? Do you guys think this is an acid or do you guys think this is a base? Let's try it below, let's see. I'm waiting for responses. So. There's the apple cider vinegar and there's the regular vinegar. Base or acid? Don't be scared. <laughs> okay, all right. As you guys are responding, let me go ahead and test this and see. Do you see that quick change? All right, so what does this correlate to? It's actually even more, oh, sorry. It's the other way around. It's actually even more strongly acidic. So regular vinegar is about a two, whereas apple cider vinegar is more weakly acidic at a three, but it's definitely an acid. So why do you think people put vinegar in their hair? Or why do you think people even put aloe vera in your hair? And the reason is because a lot of products are not pH balanced. So the products might be even more basic. I could take these off for now. The products actually might have more of a higher pH than regular water, so your cuticles are lifted. And so what you do is you're trying to bring the pH of your hair down to its normal pH, about 4.5 to 5.5, and that's why you'll see people do a rinse with, the acidic, uh, with acidic things to bring the pH back down and to close the cuticle. But the only key is that you have to dilute these because obviously you don't wanna put something that's lower acidity than your normal hair on your hair because it might actually cause a chemical reaction, a chemical burn. And I've seen some people, depending on what brand of apple cider vinegar you use, because remember, each brand has a different pH in it. And so it's actually important to test it if you're not sure because some people will follow a tutorial on YouTube and they'll say put you know two parts water one part apple cider vinegar and then you know dip your hair in it rinse it out but the thing is each one of them have you know okay there's different pHs in the product depending on the brand and it's also important to know that there's different pHs in your water so what does hard water mean People always talk about soft water versus hard water. So when you check your tap in your house, I mean, your, you know, the, um, your hair, I mean, sorry, Lord, let me take a deep breath. When you check the water in your, in your um, house, hard water actually means that the water has a higher pH than normal. And that's the reason why people that have hard water, their hair might feel more dry or might feel more stripped because the pH is normally above the normal pH of water being seven. 
And so that's the reason why it's important to make sure that if you have hard water, that the water that you're washing your hair with could actually be the problem. That's number one. Because even when you put, that's another reason people say, oh, don't put water in your hair every single day because water has a pH of seven. It's gonna lift your cuticle a little bit whether you add shampoo or you don't. So you have to make sure that you're either using pH balance products to decrease the pH back down to close your cuticle even when you're just throwing water in it, even if you don't do a co-wash, even if you don't add conditioner or do anything to your hair, water actually does lift your cuticle and you have to find a way to bring it back down and that problem is solved with pH balance products. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to put the other glove back in and we're going to do a little reaction. Oh, sorry. I got ahead of myself. There's one more item that I want to see. We have baking soda. There's regular baking soda. Is baking soda an acid or a base? Let's comment below because this is actually a very important topic. A slightly controversial topic as well, but I want to talk about this. Acid or base? And so actually, as you guys are commenting whether baking soda is an acid or base, someone asked a really, really good question. Is it best to go and buy the strips? Not necessarily. The thing is, if the products are pH balanced, normally they'll say that on the label, you know, because some, um, some, you know, if the brand is formulated by a chemist, they'll know to formulate from a higher pH to a lower pH on purpose because the higher pH is going to be the shampoo to lift your cuticles to be able to clean your hair. And as you style your hair from adding the leave-in or the cream moisturizer or the styler, it's actually supposed to go down the scale to make sure that your hair is closed, the cuticle is closed. So if people have asked base or acid, this is actually a stronger base, a pH of nine. And that's important as well too. So the thing is this, when your hair is not chemically processed, that's what it is between 4.5 and 5.5. But when your hair is chemically processed, your pH actually does change. So relaxers have a really, are bases. They have a really, really high pH. And the point of that is because the relaxers wanna lift your cuticle all the way open then go in and break the disulfide bonds. I might be going a little technical, but they break the disulfide bonds. And then what do you do next after you put relaxer on your hair? You put a neutralizer. And the reason why you put the neutralizer is because you want to bring the pH back down from whatever it was between 11 to 13 back down to 7. And, when they, and the reason why they had that indicator shampoo that turns pink when you still have um, chemicals in your hair is because if you don't bring the pH back down, your hair can fall out. And I'm sure that's happened to people that are not natural, that have even used something like a texturizer because that's what happens. If you don't neutralize it and bring the pH back down, your hair gets damaged. So I've seen some people on YouTube talking about, oh, my hair is so kinky, I can't comb it. I can't do anything to, you know, style my hair. Let me do a baking soda rinse. And that's actually very dangerous because a baking soda rinse is a pH of nine. So it can actually lift your cuticle and it's almost like a weak relaxer if done. Well, I wouldn't do it at all. So that's the reason why baking soda rinses are really, are not good for your hair because it's lifting your cuticle higher than a shampoo would and stripping it of everything. So. We're gonna do a reaction to also explain why it's important to use pH balance products because normally I don't want my products to be above a pH of eight just because the differences in um, each, okay, so from one to two to three to four is actually a difference in 10. So it multiplies. And so if you have a pH of two versus a pH of nine, it's a huge difference in what you see as far as you know your hair. And when you have these big pH drifts, that's actually when your hair can get damaged. So if you slightly raise your cuticle, wash your hair, then bring it back down to where it's happy, your hair will actually be healthier and happier because of that. You can actually control damage, you can control frizz, all these problems through making sure that you know if your products are pH balanced and a, basically a basic understanding of what the pH scale is. This is important of how people now are talking about alkaline diets and the pH in your blood and all of that. It's just as important for your hair and your skin as well. So what we're going to do is we talked about the pH and for the people that have just joined, we'll go through and I'll tell you what the pHs were again. So for the regular vinegar, remember, it's a pH of 2. And this is the pH of nine, which is the baking soda. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna combine these two because these are the biggest extremes, the pH two and the pH nine. And it's gonna show you guys what kind of reaction we'll have even in real life. Basically, if your hair is between 4.5 and 5.5, but you use something that's really, really high pH versus something that's really, really low pH, you can see what the reaction would be on your um, hair. 
And then I'm gonna do the reaction of the aloe vera juice, which is a pH of five, and the apple cider vinegar, which is a pH of four. And these are close together in pH to see if there's a difference in this reaction versus the reaction of the two products that are far apart on the pH scale. So I have my little dish, just in case something pops off. And I'm gonna bring the camera down a little bit more so you guys can see. All right, tie my little thing down. So I'm gonna put the baking soda in the dish. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add vinegar. And anyone, can you guys guess what's gonna happen when you add the vinegar? Does anybody know this reaction? I've always wanted to do this like Bill Nye the science guy, but for natural hair. <laughs> We all went to elementary school. Right, you guys remember Bill Nye the Science Guy? I've always wanted to go through and have all these reactions to show you guys, you know, but to see it because I can sit here and talk, 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 but if you see it, then you'll understand it more. So here we go. Ooh, oh, okay, oh, oh, okay, all right. That was fun. Y'all see that? Let me add a little bit more. Oh, okay, all right. So what happens is you see there's a reaction and what is gonna actually end up being is carbon dioxide is the bubbles and then on the inside is gonna be water. So when you have a high pH and you have a low pH, what they're actually gonna do is balance themselves and that's why it's called pH balance because the two and the nine will come together and if I actually measure this pH, it'll be somewhere between two and nine. You're not gonna see than be by themselves, but they'll combine. And I can actually put up the chemical formula if anybody wants to know, because it's a really cool reaction. I think it's a really cool reaction that leads to carbon dioxide and water in the end from baking soda and vinegar before CO2, right. So what do you guys think? So the thing is, if this is happening in a beaker, what do you think is happening on your hair? <laughs> when you add a relaxer to your hair and you haven't neutralized it, you just let it sit there. The reaction, you know, versus, let's try the other one. Actually, let me put this here. So the other reaction again is aloe vera juice and apple cider vinegar. So remember, again, the aloe vera juice is a pH of five. Apple cider vinegar is a pH of about three, sorry, four. And so these two are close in pH. Let's see if there's gonna be a reaction. What do you guys think? I'm curious. Do you guys think there's gonna be a major reaction or a minor reaction or no reaction at all? Comment below as we're going through this. Major reaction, no reaction at all. All right, let's find out. So we're putting in the apple cider vinegar into the aloe vera. no reaction because there's not, right, there's not that huge of a pH drift. It's a pH difference of one. Therefore, it didn't change colors, it didn't bubble, it didn't fizz, exactly. It's none to minor. So this is why if you put aloe vera directly on your hair, you could put it on your hair undiluted. You can actually cut the plant apart and put it in pieces undiluted and there will not be a reaction because it's actually close to the reaction, to the pH of your natural hair versus if you put something like a baking soda that's a big difference in pH from your hair, you'll have a reaction. So it's a simple little project to show you how even a difference of one might not be a big difference in your hair, but a difference of five or 10 would be a huge difference in your hair and how it affects it. So this was aloe vera juice and I put apple cider vinegar because only a pH difference of one and there was slightly to no reaction versus the other reaction we had that was baking soda and vinegar, which is a pH of two versus a pH of nine, and you saw all the bubbles and all the fizz. So this is just something small by getting things that are inside your house as they are now to show you guys why pH is important and why it's you know good for your, you know, why it's, okay, why the science of natural hair is important if you wanna have healthy hair and why knowing about pH is important 
when you want to have healthy hair. So let's answer questions. If anybody wants to join me live to answer questions, I'll accept it now. And if not, I can go through and answer the questions. And then we're also going to pick the winner of the $100 prize for sharing, you know, the flyer because I want to promote science. Yes. And I want people to know about the science of natural hair, but in a real world sense, in a real world application, because most people, if you just write formulas on the board and talk about it that way, you know, it might be like, you know, over your head. You know, I don't want that. So I want to go basic, you know, ingredients that you use and talk about it and explain to you guys why even in the products, it was very, very well thought out as far as the shampoo bars versus liquid shampoo, why the ingredients in the oils, why the ingredients in other things, because it has to have, everything is pH balanced because I don't want you guys to have to go out and buy strips <laughs> and test it yourself. You know, the chemist should have to do all that for you so you guys can just know that what you're using is safe to use and it's great in your hair. So let me ask a couple questions. All right. But here we go. So I've always been asked about texturizers. And texturizers are just basically weak relaxers. Texturizers are the same ingredients in a relaxer. The only difference is that it has a lower pH, so it's slightly weaker, so it's not as stripping to your hair, and the reaction is not as quick or at, well, I'm not going to say as permanent, because the disulfide bronze are still broken, but not, I guess, to the point where they just lay flat, and that's why there's still a little bit of movement. So that's what a texturizer does. It's still chemicals. It's just a weak relaxer. Okay. Volcano vibes for sure. Any other questions? So what I'm going to do now is we are actually going to choose the winner. So I'm not sure if this winner is on and I promised you guys a hundred dollars what we're gonna do is do this I'm gonna pick two people one person is written by patina I'm not sure if she's on and then curly Lou C U R L Y underscore L U I you guys have won a hundred dollars so we're gonna give you guys fifty dollars in cash via PayPal and fifty dollars towards the website to try the products Awesome. And so a great question just came in. What do you do if you have hard water at home? There are actually filters out there. If you have hard water at home, it means that your water is above the pH of 7 and it can strip your hair more than often. And that also you can put a filter on it to decrease the pH. Okay, another person is any plans on new products for the new year? Yes, ma'am. So I've been quiet for the majority of 2018 because I've been working. <laughs> I formulated a bunch of products and what we're going to do is we're actually doing something that we haven't done before. We're actually introducing a completely new line from the beginning to the end. Not one product here or there, but we're coming out with a completely new line of products. And so look for that. And we're also coming through with um, some innovations. So some new types of products that are not on the market that I think are very, very important to help you guys and make your guys journeys a lot easier as well. Yes, yeah, someone said I'm shook. You should be because it's really exciting. It's really exciting. As you guys, if you guys have been following us for a couple of years, you know that we don't do anything haphazardly. We do it for a purpose and it's going to be completely different than anything else that you've seen in our line. And it's going to be something that you're going to definitely need because it's been thought of for years, actually. This is something that I, you know, I've been working on for a couple years. And that's why we're excited to make sure that when it comes out, it's done correctly and it works in your hair texture. Someone asked, will it be good for high porosity, protein loving hair? Yes, that's actually a good question that you asked that because high porosity versus low porosity, love protein versus don't love protein, we've actually worked that into our line currently today as it is. We'll have a hair mask, the Babasu hair mask that has a vegan protein that you can use whether you have, you know, if you want protein but you're worried about the protein imbalance. And we have our Babasu deep conditioner that has no protein. So kind of basically there's a little bit for everybody in the line the way it currently is, is now, but I still feel like there's some areas that, you know, are not well covered in the natural hair space and that's what we're going to go after the less the, the people that still feel like there's still something out there missing for them and then of course even the people that love the line but want to try something new and try a different innovative way of styling your hair and that's what we're going to do with our new lines let's see looking forward to new products we miss you guys from the hair show this year yes we're definitely going to be back uh which hair show that's a good question is world natural hair show we were there which hair show are you asking all right, and if there's any other questions that you guys have, please let me know. You can even 
tweet me on Twitter, hashtag Askobia. Ask a question on Instagram, send us a DM on Facebook, wherever. I'm not that hard to find. And we'll answer these questions and more in future videos. And it's just a little taste of our little science ingredients. You know, Bill and I for the science guy, natural hair version. We're gonna do this more frequently and go in depth in each ingredient. We're even gonna go on the product labels and talk about the chemicals inside that people are always worried about or they're not sure of, like the alcohols in there. If they're good alcohols, bad alcohols, we're gonna go through in depth, piece by piece by piece to make sure that you guys are informed because the most important important thing through all this is information and knowledge. We want to teach you. We want you guys to learn. We want you guys to be empowered because knowledge is power. The more you know, the more you guys can be informed about the decisions that you make. Whether you're natural or you're not natural, the key is to have healthy hair. That's why the ingredients are should be the focus of the products, which is healthy ingredients to make sure that you maintain your healthy hair regardless of what state it's in. So we look forward to it. Yes, the next live will be in January. Look out for that. We're also going to release the first YouTube video for the Ascobia series in January as well. And someone just asked, could you briefly explain your wash and go process or does your site explain how you achieve it? So I recently just did another big chop and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a video and do it step by step to explain what my wash and go process is in my type 4 hair. I'll use our new wash and go kit and then show you guys step by step how I achieve my wash and go. Someone said, I love your glasses. Thank you. Yes, I'm gonna keep my glasses. Actually, I wear my glasses during the day. You guys just don't see that part of it. And uh, what is considered balance? Balance is actually, okay, so balance, okay, pH balance depends on what you're talking about. So for hair and skin, it's 4.5 to 5.5. That's about average for everybody. But from your, like, you know, if you go about your blood, your blood is actually like 7.35 to 7.45. It's really a small range when it even comes to human blood. And if you go too high or too low, it can actually cause death. So pH balance depends on the solution that you're talking about. For water, a pH balance of seven is normal. I hope that explained that question. And then someone else asked, will you also go live for those that can't make it to your area? Yes, we will go live for people that cannot make it to the area. What we'll do is even we have, we're going to start teaching more classes as well to some in-person classes. So if you guys are in the Dallas area, make sure that you're signed up for our mailing list because we're actually going to have some in-person classes where you guys can come in to our new warehouse and we'll talk in person, have in-depth even classes and tutorials on how to do wash and go live, how to do twist outs, or you know if you guys want to have a science discussion in person, we can facilitate that as well. And we will film some of these and make it live. We're also going to do some fun things. Not everything is going to be so educational as well too. So we have a lot of fun things that are planned for next year for people to have self-care and to take care of yourself as well because your mind and your wellness is just as important you know, as your physical self as well too. So yeah, January in 2019 is gonna be an amazing time for the brand and for everybody else. And all right, thank you guys so much for your live. I don't wanna make this too long. I just wanna pop in and say happy holidays, happy new years in advance, and we will be in touch soon. Thank you guys for taking your time out on your Saturday to listen. I hope you learned something and ask me the questions and we'll make the videos and we'll learn together. All right, take care guys, bye.